In today's video, we'll see how to recharge the refrigerant in a car's AC system. My Polo is over 8 years old and off lately I've been noticing that the temperature of the air coming out of the AC vents is a little warmer and it's not as cool as it used to be. Alright guys, the first thing we've got to do is measure the temperature of the throw of air which is coming from the vents. So we have connected my uh, DMM here and you, as you can see we have inserted the probe here. What we'll do is we'll start the car and uh, rev the engine to about uh, 1500 to 2000 RPM and check what is the temperature of the uh, throw of air coming from the vents. Set the blower to the maximum speed and uh, to the coolest setting. You can see that the temperature is not going below 25, 26. It just uh, touched 25 and it's back to 26 now. Charging the car's AC refrigerant is actually pretty simple. Provided the rest of the components are working as they should, like the compressor, the condenser, the evaporator, the blower, and there are absolutely no leaks in the system. Because if there is a leak which is causing the refrigerant to leak out into the atmosphere, you'll have to take the car to a professional HVAC technician who will evacuate the complete uh, refrigerant from the system. He will then put in a dye, a UV dye, which will help him uh, diagnose the source of the leak. He'll plug the leak and then he'll purge the air from the system. He'll put in a new refrigerant based on the quantity specified. The quantity of the refrigerant is actually specified somewhere in the car. In my Polo, it is indicated on top of the front grill, which indicates 500 grams plus or minus 15 grams of R134A. Despite being a closed system, cars tend to lose out refrigerant over a period of time, especially if your car is about say six to eight years old. One of my friends who work at Mahindra and Mahindra's HVAC department tells me that uh, cars tend to lose out about 10 to 15 grams of refrigerant every year. That's a significant amount if you consider that the entire quantity of refrigerant contained within a small hatchback like this is about 500 grams. To recharge your car's AC refrigerant, you're going to need two things. One is the testing manifold apparatus, which comes with the brass manifold and the rubber hoses, along with the quick couplers. And you're going to need the refrigerant can. Hi everyone. I'll take some time to explain about the testing manifold kit that I've purchased. It comes in a box like this. Now, this is that manifold that you see here. It is made of uh, cast brass. There are two pressure gauges mounted to it. The blue one is marked for the low pressure side. The red one is marked for the high pressure side. Now, you'll notice if you see clearly that uh, the markings here on the pressure gauges are uh, different. One goes from 0 to 220 PSI. The other goes from 0 to 500 PSI for the high side. Now, what this red markings here indicate is the corresponding saturating temperature for this uh, pressure indicated here same goes for this as well but you don't have to go into the technicalities here all you need to know is what is the pressure rating that is going to come on the low side and the high side there are two valves mounted on the either side here these control the inlet of the refrigerant from the center port it could either be used for charging your system or for evacuating the refrigerant from the system that goes from this center tubing here now in this brass manifold you have these connectors here now these are dummy connectors and they are used for parking your uh, hoses when they are not being used so you know dirt or moisture doesn't get into the hoses they are threaded so you can uh, you know thread the hose back into this manifold once the work is over now you'll also notice that there's a side glass given in the center here now this shows the refrigerant flowing while charging in the liquid form or if you are discharging or purging the refrigerant or evacuating it from the system, it shows it in the gaseous form here. Now, three hoses connect to these three quarter inch uh, threaded connections here. I'll show the hoses here. These are the hoses that come with the kit. On one side, you have uh, threaded uh, connections here which connect to the manifold right here. And on the other side, you have an arrangement like a Schrader valve you see on the tires, which has a small pin at the center. When you press it, the gas comes out of it. Now, this side connects to the manifold, like I said. Now, you can notice that the hoses are also colored. You have blue, yellow, and red hoses. The blue one connects to this port, 
which is the low pressure side the red one connects to the high side and the yellow one connects to the center now the yellow one is used for uh, refrigerant charging or uh, discharging or evacuating when it is connected to a pump now the other side of the blue hose connects to this uh, quick coupler here It connects to this uh, coupler right here. The red one connects to the high pressure coupler, quick coupler. Now you'll notice that uh, these have uh, O-rings to, you know, ensure a tight fit. You don't have to use a tool to connect it. You can uh, thread it by your hand. That's exactly how you should be doing it. You shouldn't be using any Teflon tape or a tool to connect it. Just a quick note regarding these uh, quick coupling units. These are foolproof in nature because one of them has a larger opening. The other one has a smaller opening. So you cannot connect the low pressure uh, quick coupler to the higher side and vice versa. And the way you connect is, is you simply raise it and press it into the port so that's that and the yellow tube connects to two different components it can connect to the refrigerant tank here using this connector when it is used for charging and when it is used for evacuating the refrigerant from the system it is connected to the vacuum pump so this is how you connect this uh, now, this is a refrigeration uh, can of R134A. It has 450 grams of refrigerant. It is in liquid form, but it is stored under high pressure. And uh, when you're connecting this, you need to ensure that, you know, it has, as you can notice, there's a port here. And you'll also notice that there's a pointy end here. So when you thread this to the can, you need to ensure that you open it completely because otherwise you will end up puncturing the can and that will leak all the refrigerant outside, rendering it useless. This is how you thread it. Ensure that this can is completely open. You thread it here. This is all. So this side connects to the port right here. Again, it is threaded manually by hand. You don't have to use Teflon tape or, uh, you know, use a wrench to tighten it. Hand tightening is more than sufficient. So that's tightened like this. The manifold also comes with a hook like this. So, you know, you can thread it right here. And you can hang it somewhere on the you know the top of the latch of the hood of your car so i made all the connections to the manifold you can see that the blue tubing is connected to the low line port the red tubing is connected to the high line port and the center tubing the yellow one is connected to the refrigeration can here so the whole setup looks like this and the ends of these tubes this is the low line uh, quick coupler this is the high line uh, quick coupler so this is basically the entire setup which is used for uh, charging your uh, air conditioning line. The total cost of this uh, manifold kit came to somewhere around 2300 rupees and this rough can was somewhere around 420 rupees. Now the good thing about this kit is it can be used for charging the refrigerant in your car's air conditioning system as well as your home. Oh, the only difference is the type of uh, refrigerant used because cars use uh, R134A whereas your home air conditioners use different refrigerants uh, depending on the type of the unit. Before you recharge the system with the refrigerant, you need to know what is the exact quantity of the refrigerant going in. Now, that's not possible. So what we do is find out what is the ambient temperature 
and corresponding to it there is a pressure temperature chart for every refrigerant we are going to refer the chart for r134 alpha which tells us corresponding to that ambient temperature what should be the gauge readings on the low pressure gauge and the high pressure gauge you are also going to need another person step on the gas and increase the engine rpm to say about 1500 to 2000 rpm and that's when the compressor engages completely and at that time you will know what is the reading coming on this low pressure gauge and the high pressure gauge and that's exactly going to be our reference as well so we have hung the manifold here at a hook and the refrigeration can upside down that's exactly how you should be doing it because that will let the refrigerant in the liquid form flow through this uh, tubing here now here in my car you notice this is a low side uh, port it's on a thicker line whereas this one is the high side port and it's on a smaller line so here's where you will connect the blue quick coupler and here's where you'll connect the red quick coupler so remove this keep these caps safe connect it you'll hear a firm click and before you connect it ensure that this is like open completely because otherwise it will start uh, taking in the refrigerant so this is also connected now we'll gradually open it all the walls are closed now you don't have to open it completely as soon as you see a change in the reading that's sufficient that's all same goes here open it there you go so we'll start the engine now and we'll see what is the reading coming like garu ji engine chalu kijiye and rev it to about 2000 rpm ha huh? Remember, these walls are still closed. now we need to pierce the scan to let the refrigerant go in through this uh, yellow line but you will also have air in this line so you need to purge that air out and ensure only refrigerant goes in so what we'll do is we'll pierce this first and then we'll open the valve here so that will let the refrigerant go in and we'll slowly open this uh, connector here so it will leak out the refrigerant which shows that all the air has been purged out Now we have pierced the can here. We have opened it, which means refrigerant is now contained in this. Now before you start this activity, safety first. Always wear a pair of uh, eye protection goggles and a set of gloves because refrigerant is pretty messy. It causes frostbite. So the first thing you've got to do is purge the air from the system here. Uh, guys, it's also important to know what is the ambient temperature because the pressure corresponding to this temperature is what you'll be measuring at the gauges. So now it says 28 degrees centigrade, and if you were to look, what was the corresponding? For 29 degrees, the low pressure side should read approximately 45 to 55 psi, and the high pressure should be approximately 225 to 250 psi. So let's see.
see the high pressure pipe rising up it. You can also notice the refrigerant moving it. The reading we are looking for is 29 degrees between 225 to 250 psi. Check out what is the ambient temperature on the inside now. It's showing 25, 27 degrees. There you go. 17 degrees, guys. So that's a success. So that's all, guys. You saw how easy it was. Just a wee bit of, uh, you know, uh, tinkering around with these walls and checking the pressure gauges, etc., for the corresponding reading. So it's actually pretty simple. But before you remove all this protective gear, you need to disconnect all this apparatus. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to close this. Remember, you're not supposed to discharge refrigerant into the atmosphere. It is illegal and it's not a good idea. This is closed. Both the walls are closed. Now we've got to disconnect this uh, quick coupling units. Turn it so it's closed. Pull it out. Pull this one out. Guys, remember uh, keep the cap safe and close it properly. Now you have refrigerant contained within this, so you can also see a little bit of refrigerant here. Remove the apparatus and there you go. So that's all guys, uh, we are done with the AC recharging part. I hope that was simple. Uh, this was the first time I was uh, doing this, so a lot of learnings. Uh, if I have uh, some feedback from HVAC technicians and experts in this field, I'd be more than glad. Thank you so much for watching.